Tomorrow is the feast day of the Annunciation, and it is Luke who tells the story. In Nazareth, in the region of Galilee, a virgin whose name was Mary and was engaged to Joseph was one day greeted by the angel Gabriel who had been sent by God. And we are told Mary was perplexed, and how could she be anything else? She must have been startled, a bit fearful, to say the least. Now Gabriel, seeing this, tells her not to be afraid, and then goes on to tell her that she will conceive and bear a son who will be great and whose kingdom will have no end, and she is to name him Jesus. Now when Mary asks how this is possible, she is a virgin. Gabriel tells her the Holy Spirit and the power of God will make it so, and the child she will bear will be called the Son of God. And Mary replies, I am the servant of the Lord. Let it be unto me according to your word. And Gabriel departs from her. I love that the Annunciation usually falls during Lent. In the season in which we walk with Jesus to the cross, we are pointed backward in comfort and wonder and hope to the necessary beginning without which the cross loses some meaning and with it the resurrection of Christ can be beheld in even greater joy. God has been with us. God is with us. God took on our human form and our human struggle, and the world changed. Now, I don't ascribe to some of the doctrine that sprang up about Mary, the hagiography. To me, these have served to remove the humanity of Mary. And I have theological issues with this as concerns what we claim about Christ, and I do ascribe to those claims. That Jesus was that paradoxical reality of being fully human and fully divine. Now, if Mary was not herself fully human, as we are human, the whole thing falls apart. Mary does set an example for all of us, and not just all of us women, but she does not need to be superhuman to do so, or unreachable, or reduced to symbol or stone. Our best examples are mere mortal human beings, because we are mere mortal human beings. None of us can achieve superhuman, so a superhuman example is of no merit. We learn from Mary's willingness and her humility, her consent to put it all out there on the line, to face ridicule and ostracization, but only if we give Mary the benefit of being human and not an unobtainable other. Now, in Christian art, the Annunciation has fascinated and captivated artists from the beginning. More art, paintings, sculptures, mosaics, frescoes, have been offered about the Annunciation than any other New Testament subject or event except for the Nativity and the Crucifixion. Mary Zibis' remarkable collection of poetry and carnadine won the 2003 National Book Award for Poetry, and Zibis was inspired by a personal tour of paintings of the Annunciation in Italy. She said, in Florence, a city overwhelmed by great paintings, I found myself returning again and again to a few of the Annunciation. She contemplated works by Fra Angelico, Simone Martini, Sandro Botticelli, Leonardo da Vinci, and others. Sibis grew up Roman Catholic, and the Virgin Mary was held up as an impossible ideal. Sibis' first name being Mary, she felt like a very fallen shadow of that ideal. 
But through her poetry, inspired by the religious art she contemplated, she discovered Mary not as symbol or even as an object of contemplation, but as someone she could have a relationship with, that she could sit more easily with, learn more easily from, even love. When I look at the painting Zivis was inspired by, I think about the Beatitudes, in particular the one where Jesus says, blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. Now to me, pure in heart does not mean perfect. The Beatitudes give a list of life conditions or thirsts that are blessed by God. The poor in spirit, those who mourn, the meek, the merciful, the pure in heart, those who hunger for righteousness, the peacemakers, the persecuted. Pure in heart means to me an openness to God and to others. Pure in heart means to me humility. Pure in heart means to me little thought to one's own power, authority, gain, or status. Pure in heart means to me an ability to turn around when one has walked the wrong way. When I look at paintings of the Annunciation, I see a young woman, pure in heart, who is sometimes depicted as being afraid, but who never runs and never closes her eyes. I see courage and a desire that trumps all other desires to serve God as God may ask. And that is someone I don't want to insult by denying her humanity and all that comes with it, including pain, doubt, fear, including love, commitment, joy, and a spiritual wisdom I am sorely in need of. That is someone I want to learn from. That is someone I want to be in relationship with. 